around. Hey everyone, glad to see people joining. Get myself settled. Hey, hello, hello, 30 plus mom, I see you. Hey Carrie, how you doing? It's nice to see everybody here today. Uh, I'm Nancy Davis Coe, and I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so talking with you guys about how to get your project and your book out into the world when you're stuck inside like we all are. So um, I'm going to give it a couple minutes to just see who joins up, but I'm just so happy to see some familiar names. Hey, John, good to see you. Uh, and I want to thank you all for giving me a reason to actually put on makeup today. And I'm wearing mascara for the first time since I think, how long has March been going on? A couple of, couple, three years. Oh, you like my owl pillow? Thanks. Thanks, Christine Co. That's from an artist named Isabella Samaras in the East Bay here. I love her. Um, hey, everybody. So I'm going to get going, I guess. So the point of today's uh, conversation is to talk about how we continue to get our projects and our books out into the world when we can't go outside. And um, I want to proceed this by, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Nancy Davis Coe. I'm the creator of the Midlife Mixtape podcast and the Midlife Mixtape blog, and they are both for the years between being hip and breaking one. So uh, in December this year, I published my first book. It's called The Thank You Project, Cultivating Happiness, One Letter of Gratitude at a Time. And um, it, was, it came out in December, which was great because I had a few months to you know, go out and promote it and be on the road and meet with readers, which was terrific. And then everything got canceled, starting with my March 1st reading. Everything from now until August has been postponed for obvious reasons. So I've had to think a lot about how to continue to get the message of the Thank You Project out into the world. And I hope for the next uh, few minutes to talk with you about what I'm doing, what I've learned, get your ideas, and just um, kind of make sure that we're all supporting each other as we're trying to get this creati creative work out into the world. I want to proceed this by saying the challenge of getting, uh, getting projects out in the world pales in comparison to what some of us are going through, and um, my Mom 2.0 community has been so important to me, and I just want to send you guys all a virtual hug. I hope you are staying healthy and safe, and the same is true of your families. And I know this is an unprecedented, difficult time, and I'm just looking forward to the day that we're all together dancing on the Iris dance floor again. So it's coming. Um, we got a few questions in advance, and I actually, I'm going to talk about some tactics that I've been using, but I'm going to sprinkle in some of these questions and uh, ask, you know, leave some in the comments too. But there were a couple that came in that I wanted to start with because I think they're really important. And the first one is, is it the wrong time to launch something brand new? Should I scrap what I was planning before all of this happened? And I think related to that, another question do I have to talk about COVID-19, or is it weird if I don't? I don't want to ignore it, but it's not what my product is about. So let's just start with that. I think it's, A, a better time than ever to be talking about stuff that isn't COVID-related, because I know you're drowning in that news. I know that it's overwhelming to be inundated all the time with information about the scary stuff that's going on. I think people are so relieved to have something else to think about and talk about. So don't let the fact that your product or service or book or project, whatever it is, is unrelated to the virus, prevent you from getting it out into the world. People are more receptive than they might normally be just because it's something different. So don't let that stop you. The other thing is, you know, whether or not you should acknowledge it, I think, uh, yes, of course. I mean, we are, luckily, this is our first pandemic that we've all experienced, hopefully our last, but um, I think to not even acknowledge it a little bit might feel strange, but you can do that pretty elegantly. Just kind of say, I know this is an unusual time, or I, you know, I recognize that this may not be something that you're thinking about, but here's why. You know, I, I just think we're humans. We can reach out to each other with compassion, check in on each other, there's ways to acknowledge the, 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 the pandemic without being talking only about that. So I just wanted to mention that. And then this, the second question that I got in that I also wanted to take at the top is somebody wrote in, some days I just can't work. I feel too tired or sad. How do I go on without letting, getting too down on myself? 
And uh, yeah, me too. I mean, we're all having those days. And I, I think the best piece of advice, life advice I ever heard or have passed along is how would you answer that question if a friend of yours brought it to you? If somebody who you loved, a, a good friend said, I don't, I can't work today. I'm having a down day. I can't go forward. Would you say like, you loser, you know, what's wrong with you? Of course not. You would say, that's natural. It's, it's, you know, of course you might feel that way today. If you could say that to a friend, you can say it to yourself. So I'm going to give you some tactics on for, to use on those days where you do feel like you can get your work out in the world. If there are days that don't feel like that, please do not beat yourself up. Everybody's doing the best they can. And the fact that you're even dialing into this thing today is, is a good sign. You might be able to, you're done for the day after this. Let's just say you're off the hook after this. All right, so now down to brass tacks. I wanted to give you guys four tactics that I've used to continue to market my book, even though I can't leave my home here in Oakland, California. And the first most important tactic that I've used is virtual book clubs. So I think maybe I would have figured this out eventually, but COVID means I had to figure it out last week. So um, Mom2 is going to post a, a blog post that I wrote about this that has more details, but I'm just going to run through really quickly how I'm doing this. I first signed up for scheduling software, and this makes it possible for somebody to, dial, to set up an appointment with me on behalf of their book club to talk with me about the Thank You Project. And um, I was able to, so there's lots of software to use. I know people like Acuity. I happen to be using Calendly. Um, and that let me set up time periods of each day that I can be available. It let me uh, designate how many people can are limited, you know, coming into one of the events. Um, it lets me do an automated follow-up. My automated follow-up says, thanks for coming to Book Club. Please write a review for me on Amazon or Goodreads. Um, and so I was able to set that all up in Calendly. And what I did after getting some feedback, I have one that's on behalf of book groups. So one person can sign up and coordinate his or her whole book group. The other one is if you're not in a book group and you want to do this, then just, you know, sign up, you sign up for one, for one of the time slots that I've opened. So there's kind of two flavors of that. That's the first thing. The second thing is I paid for Zoom, and I know everybody has been on Zoom like crazy, so I just went ahead and um, bumped it up to the professional level of Zoom because, Zoom because that way it's integrated together with Calendly. Somebody can go to the Calendly link, set up the book club. It automatically, hey, Natasha, hey. Um, I loved your gardening thing yesterday, Natasha. I just want to go outside and garden now, and I hate gardening. Um, okay, so Calendly integrated together with Zoom. It puts it on your calendar. It puts it on their calendar. Um, in terms of cost, I want to acknowledge that there are, you know, that this can cost money. You can do the free versions. For me, it was $8 for the version of Calendly that I'm using per month and $12 for the Zoom. But I'm not spending anything on personal services, anything. So um, I feel like I can invest $20 a month in myself in trying to get these book clubs going. So Calendly, Zoom, I went to Canva.com to make a graphic um, and started using and started using that all over social media. Now, I, may, I print, because I'm so high tech, I printed out the graphic to show you, but my print cartridge is dead and I can't get delivery till after this. So if you go to Midlife Mixtape on Instagram, you will see this graphic. I've got some pretty high tech tools here for this presentation today. Um, so go to canva.com. It's free. You can make really amazing graphics. I want to give a shout out to my perennial mom 2.0 roommate, Liz McGuire of Sibling Revelry Projects. You should be following Liz. Um, she helped me figure out how to, I'm, I'm more a words person than graphics. So this graphics looks nice. I've put it everywhere. It encourages people to sign up for book club. The next thing I did was I told people if they got 10 uh, people into a virtual book club, I would sign a book plate and send it to them. So these are my book plates. Um, and I got these printed up from Booklink, booklink.com, which I did actually before the book came out. But they're nice because I can sign them here and send them to people. They don't have to come to a reading to have a signed book. And here's a pro tip I got from the am writing duo KJ Delantoni and Jess Leahy when i send somebody their 10 signed book plates 
I throw in two extras that just have my signature on them because then somebody will say, oh, I have an extra signed book plate. I'm going to slap it in a book and give it to my mother for Mother's Day. Okay? So you can try that too. Um, and then the last thing I did was a trial run with a sympathetic audience. I went to my friend Lisa Rosenberg's book club at Smaxi. You guys all know Lisa, or you should. Um, and one thing, I'm trying to be creative about repurposing stuff that I have in my house, because that's what we have to do. So when I had my launch party, I had this giant poster made with, here, there's my poster, big foam board poster made at um, Kinko's with, hashtags and where to find me and so on. So I just use that as the backdrop for my book club. Boom, that's my virtual book club. Um, I'm really happy to answer specific questions. If you guys want to reach out to me, uh, you know, at, at, at DJ at midlifemixtape.com, I'm happy to answer questions about how to. And this is a case of flattening the curve, but in a less, less dire way. Um, so virtual book club. The next thing I wanted to suggest is to create an activity related to your project or your book. Is there anything that you can suggest for people who are stuck at home that they can do that would engage with the content of your book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction? And, you know, people are bored. They're looking for stuff to do, especially if there's a tie-in that they can do with kids. So um, one example I wanted to mention, ooh, I'm coming back, uh, my, okay, this one is not for kids, <laughs> but... Uh, my publisher, Running Press, has a book out by Andre Darlington called Booze and Vinyl, and it's a fabulous book because it pairs um, classic rock albums with two drinks, one for side A and one for side B. So, for instance, you could listen to... Um, you can listen to Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction, and you can make a kamikaze for side A and a rattle skull for side B. Well... Andre Darlington has been making videos of how to mix up these cocktails. So you can, you know, get a little bit more engaged with the content of the book by watching him make the cocktails. Great book, fun activity. The other suggestion or the other example I wanted to give you guys, and this is where my, uh, where my uh, multimedia presentation, I think, really gets, gets deep. Um, Wendy McNaughton, who was an illustrator who did the illustrations for Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, she does a weekly illustration in the New York Times. She doesn't have a book out right now, per se, but she is doing uh, an Instagram Live art class every morning uh, on Tuesdays from 10 to 10.30. You can find her on Instagram, at Wendy Mac. How do you like that for graphics? At Wendy Mac, Wendy McNaughton. And uh, so she's just doing this half-hour art class. People can join in, you know, draw a dog along with her or draw the tree outside their window, whatever the challenge is. She gives them a hashtag so everybody can look at um, what she's doing. She got 40,000 new followers last week. It was just in the San Francisco Chronicle. So, you know, be creative. What's, a, what's something that, you know, is there a meal in your book that one of your fictional characters likes to prepare? Could you make a video of yourself preparing that meal? Could you invite your readers to send in pictures of themselves dressed as characters and you could do a compilation and give out a prize? Have fun with it. Get creative. And, you know, my favorite thing to watch right now is a cooking show that my three-and-a-half-year-old neighbor is doing. She can't read. It's not that good in terms of technique, but I'm desperate. I want to see something fun and light that kind of takes me out of my worries. So think about what you can do related to your book. The name, oh, hey, Marie. Uh, the name of the cocktail book is Booze and Vinyl. I'm putting it right out there, so I highly recommend it. Um, the third thing, and this one is specifically for writers. I'm trying to think a little bit outside the box, but this is such a good idea and it's so relevant that I need to share it for the writers who are listening. Join the Facebook group called A Mighty Blaze. Here comes another fancy graphic, A Mighty Blaze, like the fire. And this just got put together over the last two weeks, and th what they're doing is promoting the heck out of books that came out March, April, uh, that are scheduled or have come out March, April, and May, and I assume, you know, probably June. Um, it is so frustrating to uh, have worked so long and so hard. I feel really fortunate that I got to have a few months out on the world with my book, and my heart just breaks for people who have been working for months or years or decades on a creative work that is coming out at a time people can't leave their homes. 
So a Mighty Blaze, again, there's the Facebook group, um, is a group that's put together to promote the work of those authors whose um, stuff is coming out right now. If you're not uh, familiar with them, join that group. You can send over author videos. You can send over your, uh, your artwork. You can do author Q&A. And a lot of established writers are doing a signal boost for everything that's coming out of a mighty blaze right now. So check it out. Um, and yeah, definitely if you're, uh, you know, do what you can to help promote those titles as they're coming out. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that too. Um, then my other idea was to get kind of retro. So do you remember in 2013 or so when people wrote a lot of blogs and also you could be in a room with people who you weren't related to or had given birth to. But good old days. Back then, hey Les, hey. Back then we used to do this thing called blog hops. And the idea was that one, a bunch of writers would talk about one topic and they'd all have their own spin on it and they would link to each other's posts uh, on this related topic. And it was a great way to get your audience familiar with your friend's work and vice versa. So organize a blog hop. Tell your friends to, you know, write something related to the topic of your book. Maybe offer to do a giveaway of your book or project, whatever you've got to give, to encourage them to participate. Um, blog hops are a great way to go. Um, guest posts, do you remember those? Um, it's, you know, we're, we're going really retro, but this is when you would write a post for your friend's blog. And again, people are home. They have some time to read. Maybe this is the time we blow the dust off the blogs and get them going again. And if you can figure out a way to, you know, write on a topic that's related to your friend's blog but also ties back to your project, give it a go. Twitter Q&A, all that kind of stuff. Um, the point of this one, the, real, the underlying factor of this tactic is ask for help. I think people, and my experience has been, people really want to help you get your book into the world, get your project out into the world, but they need specifics, they need a timeline, and they need you to be really clear. So if what you need is more re reviews on Amazon, send a note to your friends and family and say, this is why I need reviews on Amazon. It helps raise the profile of my book on that platform. If you could just write a few words and share your thoughts, by next Friday, I'd be so grateful. I think that formula of this is what I need, this is what I need it by, this is why I need it, because people, I think that's fair to offer them. Um, I think people are really genuinely interested in helping. They often don't know where to get started. So the clearer you can spell it out for them, the better. So that is my ask for help graphic. Um, so let's see, do we have... Do we have any specific questions? Um, and probably I should have been reading this all along, but I'm trying to chew gum and, I, you know, Instagram Live, I'm doing my best. We're all doing our best, right? Um, one of the questions I got in ahead of time is, uh, what long-term plans can I work on for when the world opens up again? That's a very good question. I think um, one of the things you can be thinking about now, I, so personally, I'm having trouble writing new stuff. I will admit that I'm having a kind of a hard time getting started with new stuff, but something I can do is go back and edit what I've already got. Um, I can look at marketing plans for six months down the road. I feel like I have to make a little forward motion and remind myself that this is going to end. And so um, I think if you think that, I think if you think a little bit about where you want to be in six months and what are some things, you know, just regular old, uh, you know, strategic planning kinds of, kinds of activities. What are some things I can do this week that are going to bear fruit, you know, in a few months? I think making some forward motion is helpful right now. But again, as I said at the top of the discussion, don't beat yourself up too much. Everybody's working on a different schedule than we normally than we normally would. Um, we got a question in from Adult Conversations saying, "What kind of author videos are people doing?" So I think this is in reference to that website, A Mighty Blaze. Um, you can do just it's it's sky's the limit. Um, you could do a Q and A, although maybe that's hard unless the people you live with are 
interviewers, maybe they're your kids, probably. But if they're, you know, you can uh, just talk a bit about what, what, you know, what was the incentive behind writing the book. If you, in the process of putting the book together, did a written author Q&A, which sometimes publishers ask you to do, um, you can just kind of present that in a conversational way. If you haven't done that already, it's a great time to do it because that's something you could share, not just on A Mighty Blaze, but you could share it on, on all your social media platforms. Um, so I just want to check and see if I'm missing any questions that you guys would have asked. We already established the name of the cocktail book, Booze and Vinyl. Um, and then if you want to look at the real nitty-gritty details of how to um, how to set up the virtual book club that is in the post that uh, that Mom Two is putting up for me. So now I want to conclude with my last tactic, which is kind of a challenge. And that tactic is don't worry about yourself. Go out and help somebody else's creative work. I have often, I mean, at times when I feel powerless, and I think so many of us share that feeling right now. The one thing that I know makes me feel better is doing something for somebody else because that's a little bit of power that I can have. I can make things better for somebody else. And maybe in your world today, that means cooking a meal for your family without having a breakdown. Good for you. Good day. I'm proud of you. Maybe it's picking up a prescription for an elderly neighbor that's also necessary and valuable, and thank you for doing that. But maybe it's going out and looking for some of those books that are coming out March, April, May, doing a pre-order, uh, sharing it on social media, posting a review of a new book on a platform like Goodreads. And, you know, it's maybe not, it, it might not have a direct link to whether or not you sell more copies of your own project or book or product, but it's good karma and it's going to come back to you. And in that sense, I wanted to call out two books today that have had recent book birthdays. I want to encourage you guys to check out these books. And then I'm going to challenge you to do this for somebody else's work. The first book is called Just Don't Be an A-Hole by Kara Kinney Cart Cartwright. And it came out last Tuesday. It's a, called A Surprisingly Necessary Guide to Being a Good Guy. And I'm going to suggest if you're cooped up with some teenage boys get a copy of this in your house because there's a whole section called deodorant. It's required, not um, not optional. Um, the funny thing is there's a swear word in that title, and when I rehearsed saying this earlier, what I kept bleeping out was the non-swear part of the word, so I had to write it down for myself. It's called Just Don't Be an A-Hole, Kara Kinney Cartwright. The second book I want to recommend has its book birthday today. It's from Kathy Valentine, who's the bassist for the Go-Go's and is on deck to speak at the next Mom 2 conference. Her rock and roll memoir called All I Ever Wanted came out today. So order it, call up your indie bookstore, see if they're still taking orders, get that out, um, get a copy for yourself. I think you can download the audiobook. If not, you can pre-order the audiobook. Um, so that one, if you're an 80s music fan, you definitely want to check out Kathy Valentine and All I Ever Wanted. So um, I'm handing it back to you guys. I'm going to suggest you find somebody's work to elevate, and I'm guessing that all boats will rise, your own stuff will start getting out more too, and it's the right way to go about what is a very difficult time. Um, I'm so grateful to Mom 2.0 for handing me the mic today to talk about this. I hope it's been useful. You can find me at uh, Midlife Mixtape on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can find me at uh, davisco.com, D-A-V-I-S-K-H-O.com, and from there you can get all the information about Midlife Mixtape and my book. And I'm excited for the rest of the week of programming because you guys have like a who's who of Mom 2 alumni. Tomorrow's Jenny Lawson, the blog S, new proprietor of the Nowhere Bookstore in San Antonio. Woot woot. Um, oh my god, I just woot wooted for prosperity. That's on video. Um, Thursday is Michelle Garrett from Divas with a Purpose, one of my very favorite people to catch up with at Mom 2.0. And on Friday, I'm watching Christine Co. frost the hell out of a cake. I'm looking forward to that. I told her I'm going to sit there with my Easter candy and just watch her do it. So um, hope you guys are well. Stay well. I will see you at the next Mom 2.0. Hope this has been helpful, and thank you so much.